Welcome to 2017 Scientific Sessions for the American Heart Association. I'm here with my colleague, Dr. Donald Lloyd-Jones. Welcome, Don. Thanks, Eric. It's great to be here. Well, let's talk a little bit about these upcoming scientific sessions. I'm quite excited to hear all the great science that's going to be presented here. What, what turns you on? Well, you know, Eric, I think the most important and exciting thing that we're going to see is the long-awaited release of the 2017 hypertension guidelines from a number of different societies, but led by the American Heart Association. Um, we've been waiting for some time for new guidance, especially since a number of trials came out, such as SPRINT and HOPE3, to understand whether we need to shift the targets for both defining blood pressure as well as targeting therapy to lower and lower blood pressure levels. I think there's going to be some very interesting discussions and a lot of debate about what the Guidelines Committee is putting out. Yeah, no, I think it's going to be amazing and exciting. We, you know, it's, it's been 2003 since there's been a consensus document out there, and I think the audience is truly waiting for these results. In addition, I think there's more emphasis this year on actually how blood pressure is even measured and whether or not uh, we do it right in our clinics and whether or not that makes a difference. Well, that's right. You know, at this year's meeting, we have a number of sessions around blood pressure management that should really help clinicians uh, focus in on how best to treat their patients with different conditions or with just garden variety hypertension. A number of late-breaking clinical trials as well, I think, are going to bring some clarity to how we measure blood pressure in the office. So there's some follow-up data from the SPRINT trial on how blood pressure was measured in that trial and how to translate that to the clinical setting that we, most of us practice in every day. And then there's another very interesting registry looking at uh, millions of, of blood pressure measurements in uh, many patients followed for a long period of time to understand time at target and how that affects the ability to actually prevent heart attacks and strokes with blood pressure lowering therapy. So I'm looking forward to all of these sessions that I think will provide a lot of clarity and a lot of insight into how hypertension should be managed in 2017 and beyond. Now I think these meetings are exciting and really devoting at the ideas of prevention. It's sort of at the core of these meetings. First we do hypertension. Another topic that I think will be huge will be the idea of lipids and how are we changing lipid management. One very large trial, a 13,000 patient study in Asians, will look at this question of whether or not to target um, a moderate versus high dose statin in patients who have stable coronary disease. Now we know in those who have uh, underlying acute events, we target high dose, but whether or not patients uh, with stable disease really benefit from driving their LDLs significantly lower, and particularly in Asian populations, this, uh, the real CAD study will address those. In addition, we're going to have new results on some of the novel agents that were uh, recently released, the CTEF inhibitors, uh, PCSK9 inhibitors, and even the drugs that lower inflammatory markers from the Canto study will be quite exciting for me to sort of see. Thoughts on those? Yeah, I think those are, those, that's going to be a very particularly exciting session um, because in this day and age, we know that we need to drive LDL cholesterol lower and lower. But how we do that, I think, is, is really where the, the frontier is in this day and age. So the, the trials that we'll see presented uh, in that lipid-related session, I think, are going to be particularly helpful and, again, provide insight and clarity on how we should manage these and which patients we should select for therapy. The, the off-axis thing, of course, is Cantos, where uh, it's a monoclonal antibody targeting uh, IL-1 beta, a particular molecule in an inflammatory pathway. And those were patients that were pretty well treated already with our usual cocktails of preventive therapies, high risk with cardiovascular disease. And now I think we're going to learn a little bit more about which patients respond to this additional anti-inflammatory agent. And speaking of sort of the frontiers of therapy, think about it even in diabetes. Years ago, we just used insulin to, and you know, a few agents to sort of lower people's glucose. Now we're thinking about preventing cardiovascular events with the SGLT2s and GLP1s. Exciting new results uh, certainly coming out around Empareg, uh, the Canvas study, and the Excel study. Again, helping us sort of define what subgroup actually benefits. While these drugs are shown to be effective, we really don't know who it is that benefit from these drugs and which can be done in sort of a cost-effective manner. I think this is uh, an important area for, for cardiovascular practitioners uh, of all stripes. Um, you know, personally in my practice, I've kind of shied away from managing diabetes, um, partly because it's, it's really not been a cardiovascular, you know, outcome-related issue to manage the medications for diabetes. But now that's not easy to say anymore, and so I think uh, the information that we get from these trials about patient selection 
and the order of therapies we might be choosing to treat diabetes is going to be important for cardiovascular practitioners to have knowledge about. No, absolutely. This is a field that now I don't think cardiologists can ignore, and learning more about it will be yeah. very important. Uh, moving to something we know a lot about but need to learn more, antithrombotics. Anything at the meetings for there? I think there are a number of trials that are going to focus on antithrombotic therapy and antiplatelet therapy that also will help us understand how to manage these things, particularly around the time of interventions. So a number of trials will look at how we should manage anticoagulation therapy and antithrombotic therapy in the setting of putting in electrophysiology devices. I think that's going to be helpful because we know we worry about uh, the complications that come with pocket uh, hemorrhage yeah, yeah. And, and subsequent infections and things like that. Also, uh, the, the CAB trial is going to shed some light on the intensity of antiplatelet therapy after coronary bypass grafting. And I think that strategy of looking at aspirin alone or aspirin plus ticagrelor or ticagrelor alone should actually give us some insight into how much and how long antiplatelet therapy is needed after surgery. Now these are all great questions and we struggle a lot in clinical practice what to do with our patients and will this make a difference. So I think they're doing the right studies. In my mind the other sort of sets that are pretty exciting are the idea of not only when we know what we should be doing, are we actually doing it and how can we do it better in the future? So there's a whole series and devoted session on the quality of care and how can we improve it. The Stick To It trial, the ACS Quick, and the STEMI Accelerator program are three that I'd kind of like to highlight. Any of those sort of one that you want to talk about? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, understanding systems of care and how we can better treat our patients even before they get to the hospital, as was done in the Accelerator 2 trial, I, I think is going to be very important information and perhaps start to push the envelope on setting up these systems of care in more and more places, perhaps particularly in rural areas where that, that first hour, of course, is really critical in maintaining uh, my, and salvaging myocardium. Yeah, the ACS Quick study is a similar type of, of study, but it's now done in India and in seeing if we can improve the quality of care delivered to patients in this now emerging uh, world of Indian practice. Uh, whether or not a quality of care program that we've used, similar to what we've used in the U.S. now, could be extended to other places around the world, I think will be incredibly exciting. And then finally, the Stick To It program. The idea, can we get our patients to stick to it, to remain on their medications through a series of interventions done at the patient level in a personalized fashion that can drive better adherence over time? Remarkably important topics. Absolutely right. How about other things beyond the late breakers that sort of are going to you're going to attend and make sure that it, yeah. other people do. I think there are a number of things. It's, a, it's really fun, you know, working with you to put together this program. And, and we should mention all the many volunteers that help us create really exciting Content, programming. Yeah. And, and, you know, you can certainly see some of this online, but actually being here and interacting with some of these sessions, I think, is the really exciting part. A couple things that I particularly am I'm, I'm looking forward to is getting to, into the simulation zone, where you actually... Um, simulate caring for patients in acute and, and other settings um, and really see and get to practice how you might do these new technologies and use them in different ways. Um, the other thing, of course, I think that, that's been new in the last couple of years is the frontiers in science, where scientists can really share their latest work in sort of a safe space and, and where that exchange of ideas in person, I think, really can push forward the entire field. Yeah, no, those rapid fire sessions are exciting. The format it actually generates more excitement uh, in the fact that it's really bulleted and really, really novel stuff. Yeah. And then the final thing I'd like to emphasize is the health tech sessions. Uh, those sessions are devoted to use of technology and that interface between technology and how it applies in clinical practice every day. An entire day devoted to that. We're out on the West Coast in the, in the Tech Valley. So we're having some of the large giants of, from industry coming in and talking to us to start the day, and then a series of, of efforts throughout the rest of the day to make that happen. Don, I'd like to thank you again, as well as everybody from Scientific Sessions, for having put together an amazing meeting. I'm excited so much to see these. Hope you all enjoy.